Welcome to MMA Docs. My name is Hector and as always I want to thank you for tuning in. A special thank you to all of our clients and let's get this show on the road baby. We got UFC Fight Night 59 and uh, now from a betting perspective this card for me just doesn't um, man I just scoured high and low looked through every single line every single prop every single I mean everything and uh, I really had to narrow it, narrow it down because there were a bunch of a bunch of uh, I just I didn't I didn't see the uh, the same things that I saw at the last event. So I'm not gonna force it. I'm not gonna you know make the uh, the for, force something that I that I don't see is there. Now there are some things that I see, but um, but man, this one took a long time. I really tried to to uh, uh, select and choose only the 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 best um, that you know in my opinion that I see but this was a tough one because uh, like I said there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, the prices are right where they should be and there are a lot of uh, overpriced things but I uh, don't necessarily want to go against it because I don't think what um, going against it is, is going to happen and so so I'll, I'll break it down but uh, just wanted to give you guys a heads up on this one this is a this is an interesting card. Not, not uh, like I said, not, not my favorite for betting. But um, so uh, much respect to all the men and women stepping into the octagon. Always check your local laws and government for bets, and then also um, uh, never bet more than you can afford to lose. So let's get this party started. So we got Matsuda versus Sanchez, a flyweight fight. Very interesting fight. I uh, really broke down these guys, and uh, Matsuda, he, in a nutshell. He just, um, he doesn't, he, for me, he doesn't have that, that killer instinct. He doesn't have that, that edge, that fighter's edge. He doesn't have that, um, that, that spark that I look for in fighters. Joby Sanchez does have that. And, uh, and Sanchez is going to show us a better version of himself. And he's going to um, show improvements. And um, I like Sanchez in this fight. Now, I'm not overly in love with it. Uh, at minus 170 or higher, I'm not really that in love with it. Um, so it's going to be a very, very small bet, a very, very small bet. Like I said, we'll, we'll, there will be better days to to bet heavier and, and go bigger. But I, for this one, I, I just I don't want to go real heavy on it. Now, um, it will be a betting pick, but it'll be a very tiny betting pick. And uh, it'll, so Joby Sanchez, by decision, is my pick. If I had to bet it, I would bet Sanchez. And... Um, I think Matsuda, like I said, he's he's uh, he's okay, but he just doesn't he doesn't have that killer instinct. When he fought Chris Beal, he could have done a few things to to ensure a victory for himself, and he didn't do it. And I watched previous fights where he split decisions and things, and he just doesn't doesn't have that edge. Um, but I my concern about not, for not going big on it is because he is in his hometown, and so um, that sometimes encourages fighters and and uh, and the judges. So. Uh, it'll be a small pick, but Joby Sanchez by decision. And for the next fight, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because I'd rather spend that time elsewhere. But I'll say O'Connell by first round knockout. Uh, O'Connell's going to be swinging, uh, swinging for the fences, and and uh, that Van Buren just leaves his chin out there. So, um, but man, Vir Matt Van Buren, Buren trains in uh, an alliance with um, with Gustafson Davis. So he should have some improvements, but there's too many should-haves and would-haves in this fight. I don't like it one bit, but I'll say O'Connell by first-round knockout because he does have the power. He should land on Van Buren, but who knows? Not a confident pick at all. If I had to bet it, I would not bet it. Do not bet. I don't advise a bet here at all. Rosa versus Soriano. Wow, this fight I am very, very interested in. I really um, think this will be... Uh, a very exciting fight because we got Soriano coming off two losses and uh, he's got his back against the wall. If he doesn't win here, he's going to get cut. And Rosa did nothing but impress all of us when he fought uh, Seaver. So, and, you know, both of them being from, from, uh, from the New England area, from the Boston area, very interesting, very interesting fight here. And, uh, you know, Soriano coming from the black. So both of them being from that area, both of them moving down to, to Florida one with American top team, one with um, with the Black Zillions. We know they don't they don't like each other. Now, from a fighting standpoint, 
these guys are very evenly matched. I give Soriano the the stand up advantage, and uh, I don't I don't necessarily think that Rosa can take the fight down to the ground, but it wouldn't surprise me. So the bottom line in this fight for me is that I see two guys that are uh, very evenly matched, both young, both improving. Rosa, I see a lot of dedication from this guy, improvements from him, and I wouldn't be surprised if Rosa can hang with Soriano on the feet and then decide to take him down or clinch up with him. I don't think it'll come easy, and I could see it being a split decision, maybe even a draw. So uh, I have to side with Rosa, though. I, I have no faith in Soriano. Uh, I mean, he, he fought a couple of good guys, but uh, but still, I just... I don't, I don't see it for Soriano, and and uh, he'll come in possessed, so either one of these guys winning will not surprise me, and um, for me, it's a do not bet. I don't advise a bet at all. If I had to bet it, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't bet this fight. I'd rather uh, sit this one out, because like I said, there's always, for as many times as we feel pressured or like, um, you know, a eager to bet a fight. There's always going to be better fights. There's always going to be better cards in the future. And this one's a very interesting fight from, from a betting standpoint. I don't want to bet it. I'm going to go with Rosa by decision, but do not bet. Perez versus Case. Perez making his debut. And um, Case has a lot of a lot of hype behind him now. You know, he looked very good. He's looked um, better and better in each fight. And uh, with Frankie Perez, we got a guy, um, a prospect, making his debut. Uh, Perez is going to want to take it to the ground. Case is going to want to keep it on the feet. I think Case's takedown defense will be strong enough to keep it on his feet. I wanted to bet Case, but ultimately I, I decided not to. And uh, if I had to bet, I would bet Case. I'm not going to. It's going to be a do not bet for me. And uh, I'll go with Case by decision. Possibly a knockout, but um, that's just – this one's uh, – I don't. I don't see the bet here. I don't. I really don't. It's a little bit overpriced, and I don't. I don't like it for a bet. For the next one, Patty Houlihan versus Shane Howell. Uh, Houlihan all day for me in this one by submission in round one. I think this is a setup fight, uh, and I think that Patty will get back on the on the right track here. He'll have his. Uh, he'll have John Cavano in his corner now, and he'll be just fine. And he'll get that submission uh, or that, that finish in round one or two. And so he will be a betting pick for me. Four stars. I'll be betting it. And I like Patty Houlihan. Uh, one of the things uh, before I before I move past it, a lot of times when fighters are set up in fights, they, um, they look past their opponent. Or uh, like McGregor says, you know, he looks through his opponent. But most fighters look past their opponents. And uh, Houlihan here... He could look past his opponent, but he won't because he's in Boston, which is basically a hometown for, for them there. And uh, and he's got uh, McGregor fighting on the cards. He's got his coaches there. He's got everything he needs to win, and he, he's going to win. So I really like Patty Holohan in that fight uh, for a bet, for a betting pick. And uh, we'll go over those numbers in a second. Zane versus Wade. I really like Wade. Big fan of Wade. Um, I bet him in his last fight, making his debut. Came through wonderfully. And I see him coming through wonderfully once again. Wade by submission in round one. Zing, he's just, he arguably won, you know, with Ultimate Fighter in China and all that. But um, watching his fights, I'm just, uh, he's more of an amateur in my opinion, you know. And um, and props to these guys for going in there, but I don't think he's going to win this fight. I really like Wade. And uh, Wade has a, a good head on his shoulders. You know, he's got goals and um, aspirations and things he wants to do. And I like Wade in this fight. I really do. Four stars. Submission round one. Chris Wade. Lorenz Larkin versus John Howard. Oh, man. These two guys. God knows who's going to show up in this one. That absolute do not bet. I'm going to go with Larkin. Uh, drop into 170 where he should be. And uh, expect him to win the fight. Larkin by decision. If I had to bet it, I wouldn't. Do not bet. Now, this is a very interesting fight here. Cajal Pendred versus Sean Spencer. Wow, what an interesting fight. If this wasn't in Boston, if this was, let's say, Vegas, I'd be Sean Spencer all day. Or not Sean Spencer all day. If this was in Vegas, I'd say Sean Spencer, lean. Lean towards Spencer. If this was a situation where Pendred wasn't fighting on the same card as Patty Houlihan, 
wasn't fighting the same card as McGregor. I would say uh, Sean Spencer for sure. But those two things play huge roles. He got his whole his whole team there. They're fighting in Boston, and this guy just survives. I mean, this guy is a tough, tough fighter, very tough fighter, and uh, he's young. You know, he fights old, but he's young, and I expect him to have improved. Uh, he he's aware that he's the underdog. He says that he's always the underdog, and uh, watching him fight, I feel like I, I from what I see, his skill his skills could be better. I just feel like he's got more to offer. And Spencer, he's like a poor man's version of Neil Magny. And uh, he just picks his shots. He's like a point point fighter. Pender's got to clinch up with him and uh, not gas. And, uh, and it'll be a split decision type. So I'm going to go with Pendred by split decision. But it's a do not bet. I can't bet this fight. Do not bet for me. And I don't advise it. Pendred by split decision. Do not bet. I had to bet it, like I said, I just I wouldn't bet it. If I had to, I guess I would put money on Pendred, but I wouldn't because I don't even want to lose, you know, any any of that money. So uh, I would allocate it elsewhere. So Park versus T Bow, another very interesting fight. I really like this one. Very evenly matched. I would say Park, but I can't because. Uh, there is a good possibility that he could be sick. Now, he may not be, but there's a good possibility he is sick and he won't be his usual self. With that being said, you know, T Bow, very consistent. We know what to expect out of him. He'll start slowing down towards the end of round two, but he'll win rounds one and two. And uh, he may even finish. Who knows? He might land that submission. Probably not, but you never know. And uh, I got to go with T-Bow here. Do not bet on uh, on this one um, because, like I said, it's it's a very it's a very uh, it's a very tough tough matchup for uh, for both these guys. But uh, actually, you know what? This is one of the ones that I narrowed down. Let me take a look. Yeah, I narrowed this one down. So um, we'll just take that one. We'll take that one off. Put this one there yeah so this is actually one that it'll be a because <laughs> because of the of the um the matchup and the, the stylistically sorry this is one of the ones i narrow was narrowing down stylistically i see uh, let's say at worst the the ground game the wrestling is neutralized the stand-up i had to go with t-bow i mean park watching his fights i just wasn't sold and uh T Bow has done enough to sell me just slightly on it, so it'll be a tiny little bit on T Bow, um, very small, like I said, almost a do not bet. But I can't, I can't ignore the fact that it's very evenly matched, and T Bow should have an edge here. So uh, T Bow by decision, very tiny, small bet, almost a do not bet. Uriah Hall versus Stallings. This is Hall's fight to lose. You know they're bringing in Stallings here on five days' notice. Hall should win this fight. He should get the knockout. But if he goes decision, man. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. So do not bet. I wouldn't bet at Hall by knockout round two. Donald Cerrone, Ben Henderson. Wow. H Henderson here, pff, he is coming in possessed, looking to uh, avenge his loss. I mean, what is he going to do? Retire? I don't, I don't think so. And uh, with Cerrone taking this fight on two weeks' notice, going in there fighting, and uh, very interesting matchup. Uh, ultimately, I decided on a do not bet. I had to pick a side. I'd go with Henderson here. Um, it's the short notice for Cerrone. The fact that Henderson's coming off a loss, and he, he, you know, who wants to go out like that? So Henderson should win this a decision here. I was looking at the over. But ultimately, decided to pass on it. But uh, Henderson by decision. If I had to bet it, I would. I guess I would have to bet Henderson. But I'm not eager to bet against the Cowboy. You know, I, I, uh, I knew he'd beat Miles Jury, and uh, predicted it. And um, for this one. I see more in Henderson in this in this particular matchup at this particular time, but uh, I'm gonna pass it. I gotta pass this one. So pass Henderson by decision, and we get to the main event. Conor McGregor is uh, no doubt a special fighter, and uh, he's taking things to another level in my opinion. But unfortunately for us who like to bet, everybody's picked up on that. Everybody knows that he's taking this to another level. Um, the hype is definitely there. So 
pretty much makes it to where we can't bet it. You know, I mean, I guess you could, but uh, there's an there's an interesting prop that I really like. So um, we'll, I'm gonna go with that. Conor McGregor, first round knockout. If not in the first, definitely in the second, and uh, and that will be my my pick. And if I had to bet it, I am gonna be betting it, so it'll be McGregor. But it's gonna be a prop bet. Can't go too crazy on it with the limits and everything. So let's go ahead and move over to the to the uh, text file. So MMA dogs, UFC Fight Night 59, five stars, none. Fortunately, I don't have any five star picks there. Four stars though. I've got Patty Houlihan at uh, you can get him at minus 285. Chris Wade at minus 500. Those are the two four star picks. Three stars. I really like McGregor Seaver fight won't start round three at minus 291. You figure if there's a fluke of any sort with Seaver, it'll be early. Uh, Seaver really gasses at the three minute 30 mark of round two. And uh, so I like this one a lot, actually. I like this prop a lot, but like I said, with the limits, you can't go too crazy with it. Um, and then. Uh, <laughs> the guy that almost was a do not bet, but ultimately I decided to, to take a little stab at him. Just a tiny little play. We'll go over the numbers in a minute. Gleason Tebow at minus 135. And Joe B. Sanchez at minus 170. I wish he was closer to minus 135, minus 120 like Tebow, but he's not. So that's okay. But just very, very tiny, small, small plays. And um, so those three are three-star plays. And uh, let's move on down. So MMA Dogs bets. One unit equals 1% of the bankroll. The ratio remains the same. So these are based off of my confidence. And uh, so the big play is going to be Patty Houlihan at minus 285 and Chris Wade at minus 500 uh, for minus 161, 3.30 units. So take those two, parlay them. Gives us odds of minus 161, 3.30 units to win 2.05 units. So, you know, um, nor normal average size play, nothing too crazy. The next four plays are very small, very, 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 very small. Like I said, this card for me just isn't. Uh, I'm patient enough to wait. This just one just isn't um, isn't something that I'm, you know, looking to go bet. Oh, let's go ham on this or that or go crazy with it. No, for the next fight, the uh, next play I really like it though. McGregor Seaver fight won't start round three at minus two ninety one and Patty Houlihan at minus two eighty five. That's uh, odds parlaying together minus one twenty three. 0 0.70 units to win 0.57 units. Very small play, but it's a it's a play nonetheless. Next one, same thing. McGregor Seaver won't start round three at minus 291, and Wade at minus 500 equals minus 163. So parlay those two together there, minus 163, and 0 0.70 units to win 0.43 units. And then two little half unit plays. <laughs> the guys that almost didn't make it, but ultimately, ah, let's put a little something on them. They're worthy of it. Uh, Gleason T bout minus 135, half a unit, 0 0.50 units to win 0.37. And Joe B. Sanchez, 0 0.50 units to win 0.29 units. So small little plays there. Your grand total is 5.70 units to win 3.71. So that does it. Nice and conservative card for me. And uh, like I said, I'm not going to force it if I don't see it. But um, but that's it for, for, for now and uh, for today. Um, I hope to see you guys all real soon and uh, thank you guys for tuning in especially like I said our clients and I hope you guys all have a great weekend I'm excited for we got some really exciting fights coming up uh, we got Diaz and Silva at the end of the month in a couple weeks so that'll be really exciting I see a couple plays there on that card already so um, so yeah that does it hope you guys have a great weekend I hope we are hooting and hollering happy as can be Winning 3.71 units, like I said, small and conservative, but sometimes that's the way it's got to be. And uh, I will talk to you guys real soon.